Hey, good morning everyone! Welcome to the Sacramento Zoo's Facebook Live. My name is Mike. I'm Bailey. And we are keepers here at the Sacramento Zoo. We want to thank you for joining us again this morning. Today the subject is... Hawks! Hawks of all different kinds. We actually have two different hawks we're going to talk about. Mike will talk about saguaro, our Harris's hawk, in just a moment. And here we've got Steve, who is a red-tailed hawk. Now something that's pretty cool is we do have a local species, the red-tailed hawk, which you can see all around the Sacramento area. In fact, all around California, North America, all the way up into Canada, down into Mexico, they are super widespread. But something like a Harris's hawk has a little bit of a more narrow range. So we're challenging you as our viewers on Facebook watching our live, thank you for supporting us. If you want to, throughout this entire Facebook live, please post any questions you have, comments about the birds even, but what we really want to hear is, what other types of hawks have you seen in our area besides the red-tailed hawk? So go ahead and get those questions flowing and we'll let Mike talk a little bit about saguaro before I go into details about Steve here. Well, thank you, Bailey. So again, as Bailey mentioned, this is saguaro. We call him Sig for short. Now, this bird is actually native to the desert southwest of our country. So you might see him in Arizona, New Mexico, but the range extends all the way down to South America. Now again, his name, his formal name is saguaro, which gives you kind of a hint as the type of habitat you would find a bird like this. Anybody like the ever... saguaro cactus? Saguaro, oh, that would be the saguaro cactus. Very good, Bailey. <laughs> so that is the habitat of the Harris's hawk. They live in the deserts, the southwestern deserts of our country, and again, all the way down to South America. Now, Harris's hawks are pretty amazing. All, all birds up here are amazing. Harris's hawks are very unusual, though. Now, as we know, they're a raptor or a bird of prey. They have some common things about them that all birds of prey, raptors have. Those big forward-facing eyes for being able to spot their prey, which might be things like small rodents, large rabbits, any number of small animals living out there in, in the deserts, chipmunks, other birds. Now, the cool thing about them also are their feet. Take a close look at those feet. Again, the feet and talons. Those are the tools of the raptor to catch and kill their prey. Ah, I'm sorry. Ah. They don't want to, well, they don't want to make that sound, but I digress. These birds are kind of unusual in that they are social. Now, most birds of prey you're going to see around here, owls, falcons, hawks like Steve, are what we call solitary. They'll find a mate and they'll stay with that mate, but generally though, they don't hang out together, they don't hunt together, they don't share food together. That's, er, oh, I see, I see. That's something about the Harris's hawk though, they are social, they hunt in groups. In fact, they are known as the wolves of the sky. Oh. Nice. Did you hear that? <laughs> wolves of the sky. So what they do, you know, might, again, they live in the cactuses and, and different types of, of, of vegetation out in the desert. You might have an individual, possibly the dominant female. Now, with most raptors, birds of prey, the females are the larger, usually more dominant of the, of the uh, individuals. Females sitting up on a cactus, scanning the horizon, looking for their next meal. When they spot that, they might signal their other members of their group. Again, they live in a group, could be a mate, or usually a mate, other younger birds that were, were hatched out in previous seasons. Anyway, they're all hanging out, five, six, seven birds hanging out together. Then they signal one another. That's when the chase begins. So like a pack of wolves, different individuals take on different roles in catching and killing the prey. Teamwork. You might, teamwork. Teamwork is the key to this bird's survival in a very, very harsh habitat, a harsh environment, the desert. Not much water, not a lot of prey. But they'll begin the pursuit. You might have one bird chasing. You might have another bird trying to ambush trying to guide that prey animal. Could be that giant jackrabbit, which a bird like this size would have a pretty tough time as an individual, but as a group though, they can work together and catch that animal using their powerful feet and talons, quickly dispatching their prey with a big, good, hard squeeze. Now you notice both Bailey and I are wearing very heavy, heavy leather gloves because even though these birds have what look like chicken legs, they have extremely powerful muscles, or, or actually tendons in their legs combined, then they're also ratcheting too. So when a bird of prey comes down on, our, on, on their prey, they can close their feet, use these talons to puncture or crush the uh, spinal cord or vital organs, but they can also lock on. It's, it's almost like a, a little ratcheting tool which locks in place. So they don't use a lot of energy to kill their prey. So in many cases, they can fly off of that prey or again, they're just gonna hang on until that prey is no longer living. And then they're gonna use that little beak there which is kind of sharp and hooked, sort of looks like a nice pair of uh, oh, scissors, you might say, and cut that <laughs> prey apart bit by bit. You're supposed to look at the camera, Sig. Look at the camera, look at the camera. Oh, okay, we're not gonna look at the camera. There we go, look at the camera, there we go. <laughs> so again, amazing birds, they have incredible eyesight. We like to say that a bird like Sig could read a newspaper headline at the length of a football field. 
So their vision is designed to pick up both motion and detail so they can see their prey off in the distance, locate it, and so again, very unusual in, in the, again, in the bird of prey world. So again, that is the Harris talk. I'm gonna bounce things back over to Bailey to we tell us more about- We did have a quick question oh, of oh, how yes. many chicks can they have? That's what, usually, so I think at least two, three. Yeah. Probably, probably, I think two is kind of a, an average figure. Yeah, but, I would uh, say like maximum four-ish. Yeah, yeah most birds that like that will be like two to four eggs. Good question. Right. Keep those questions coming. Do yep. we get any responses as far as other hawks? Uh, we have, some people have hawks in their neighborhood, but and they know they're not red tails, but they aren't sure what other hawks Very might be good. in the area. Oh, that is an awesome observation, comment, participation. Yes. Yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about that. So obviously one of the most distinguishing characteristics of the red-tailed hawk is the red tail, right? Yeah. So we'll show off Steve's tail a little bit here. Oh, look you at can that see tail. he's got that crimson red color, but what's pretty important to note is that there are a lot of red tailed hawks out there, which are what we call juvenile or a little bit younger. Typical of something like a bald eagle, they won't get their white feathers on their head till they're between six and seven years of age. Same idea goes for red tailed hawks. They won't necessarily get their what's called adult plumage or adult feathers until they're a few years of age. So you could see very well a red-tailed hawk flying in your area, but they might not have that characteristic red just yet. They might have some of these patchy colorings, maybe there's a little bit lighter. And here in Sacramento, we're really lucky because we actually have a diversity of what's called different morphs of hawks, basically different shades of colors. You've got a lighter morph like Steve, perfectly camouflaged with a lot of that lighter bark surroundings, various things to perch on. But a little bit farther down south in Clarksburg, Lodi, places like that, if you have any viewers from that area, there are a lot of dark morph, dark morph hawks too. That's kind of a mouth, say. kind of a mouthful, honestly. <laughs> Someone else try to say it at home. Um, but so there are different <laughs> colors of those hawks. But another really good way to tell if you're looking at a red-tailed hawk or not is actually by size and their behavior. So here in California, this is probably the most common hawk that is found. If we're looking at kind of an average across the whole state, but also they're probably the largest hawk in California that you're going to see. They're not the largest hawk in the world, but in California, they are one of the larger ones. So you can tell by size, you can tell by that coloring if they are adults. You can kind of see how much bigger Steve is to Sig as well. Granted, they, these particular individuals are from different places. Still, Steve is significantly larger than Sig there. And you also, yeah, notice, too, oh, and you also notice too, Sig has that very distinctive white band across his tail. Yep. So if you ever to see a hawk, hawk like this in your neighborhood, it's you know. not, he's a little out of his range. It's white tail, not yeah. red tail. Right. Yeah, exactly. But a couple things I did want to point out on Steve that are a little bit easier to see than the Harris's hawk, which by the way, they are, you know, both diurnal raptors, what we like to call active during the daytime, both hunting their prey with their feet. They are super different birds. Mike talked about the fact that they are social, those Harris's hawks. Red tailed hawks are mostly solitary, except for when, you know, in breeding season, courting a female. They're known to do these beautiful aerial displays, something called courtship, where they're essentially showing off their agility, that flying capability, flying, you know, at a max speed of 120 miles per hour when they're in pursuit of prey. These are excellent flyers with excellent vision, just like Mike mentioned. The vision of a hawk is absolutely wonderful. So something that we can point out too near their eyes, they do have an extra ridge of bone. Now, if any of you have been out this summer, socially distancing with masks, if you've been outside, you might even wear sunglasses as well. This ridge of bone just sticking out there, that is pretty much like built-in sunglasses for hawks. It's a lot like a of baseball cap. With a like a baseball yeah. cap, exactly. And then if we look a little bit closer, you'll see all of these kind of feathers here. These are called rictal bristles, and these help that hawk sense what they're eating, helps keep their beak a little bit cleaner, and those are just essentially stiffer feathers that come out when that hawk can be eating a variety of different prey items, which is pretty neat. And Mike mentioned, you know, their beak is pretty much like that knife. Their talons are just like that fork holding that food in place. And these two will eat similar things. You know, the red-tailed hawk does have to hunt for its food by itself. It doesn't do that kind of cooperative style of hunting. But in our area, locally here in Sacramento, they can catch anything from a mouse all the way to a bird or even a squirrel if they're feeling super motivated that day, right? So they are doing an incredible job of keeping all of those prey items in check here in the city. Pretty amazing stuff. Now, kind of, we got a slew of questions. Ooh, oh, all amazing. right. We That's what we love to hear. Stump, a stump, stump, stump the zookeeper. Wonderful. Right. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, how long do these guys live, respectively? Great question. So, for the red tailed hawk, um, out in the wild into their mid to late teens, it's pretty lucky, but more of an average of 12 to 14 years. 
And then in human care, like here at Sacramento Zoo, they can live upwards of into their late 20s or even 30s. We should also mention too, Saguaro here is 19 years old. Yep. And Steve is? Around 20, 22 at this point, right? Actually, 20. close to their over 30. almost 30. 30. It's like, 30 now, yeah. yeah. You guys, more like 30 years yeah. old. Yeah. 29 years old. <laughs> so they can definitely live a lot longer in human care, which I know we've talked about previously on Facebook Live, but there are a lot of different factors that we can control here that pretty much doubles their lifespan in some cases. I'm going to throw in one more little anatomical factoid that mm -hmm. Bailey and I, well, I actually only recently learned. Now, you might notice our both uh, Steve and Sig have, I'm going to call them bird lips. <laughs> I'm going to throw a new term at you. Commissure. I actually, I, did some, I, I, I was going curious. What are the bird lips called? I did some studying online, found out it's called a commissure. I didn't Very even know specific. that, guys. Mike is teaching me phrase. new things. Yeah, new things every day. Adding so, it to my bird nerd yeah, vocabulary. Part, part of a bird keeper's life is to learn new things about your animals all the time. Oh, see there. You can and kind of and see actually, them. while we're up close, you can also see something called the nictitating membrane that, oops, sorry, Steve, <laughs> kind of comes down sometimes, which can protect them from the elements too. So there are a lot, there's a lot on their face we can talk about, which is pretty interesting. And I'll just mention too, the, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, nictitating membrane is a scourge of bird photographers, bird <laughs> photographers, because inevitably you're taking a photo of a bird like this, that little third eyelid flips across there and they've got very milky looking eyes. So yep. that's what that thing is. You'll see sometimes if you're taking a picture of a bird of prey, you might see that little milky covering. Okay, Bailey, you talked about kind of how fast those red tails can fly so that you handled, but oh, uh, there are more. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, how do you tell the males and the females apart? Are males more colorful in like species They're yes for, for both, both. yes yeah, so, yeah mike you can take oh actually you know. you know that's really an interesting thing with a lot of birds like say peacocks pheasants the males are extremely colorful otherwise you know the females tend to be a little more of a, you know sort of a brownish colors not quite as striking well with birds of prey the only real outward way of uh, telling them apart when they're adults is their size mm -hmm. typically again females tend to be larger because they have to be able to take care of their, their nest, their eggs, their offspring. Whereas in many cases, the males are out just going out, finding food, bringing it back to the nest. And the males will also spend time in the nest too. But generently though, there's no real color difference with birds of prey and, and, and their, uh, their gender. Yep, yeah, and it's about a third of the size bigger, anywhere between 20 to 30% is that only dimorphic trait pretty yep. much. And so that also means that for both males and females, the, they on red tail hawks, they'll both get those red tails. So that's yep, not absolutely. a distinguishing feature. Absolutely, yep. They will both get them. Awesome. Someone has said that they um, don't know what hawks they have, but they were lazy circling around, and then they heard calls like you do in the old western. Ah. <laughs> oh, the old western. Yeah, movie. and to this day, now, if you joined us a few weeks ago with our, our, our kookaburra foster, and you may have heard me mention the fact that the kookaburra's call has been used for many, many years to represent the jungles. Yeah. It so happens the red tail hawk was kind of a kind of a shrieking sound is to this day used to represent any bird of prey. It could be our majestic bald eagle soaring over the skies. Ah. And they inevitably use the call of a red-tailed red hawk. hawk. If you ever heard of, well, you, you can probably find this really easily, a bald eagle, real yeah. vocalization is more of a kind of, kind of whippy sound compared to that majestic sound effect they use. It's a lot more like a sea bird. marine like yeah. more like a seabird, yeah. So they're mm. almost always using the red-tailed hawk as the bald eagle flies across the screen. Pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, any, so. pretty much any bird of prey, uh, any hawk or eagle, they use that red-tailed hawk. So it's very possible those birds that they saw were in fact red-tailed hawks. Um, a lot of hawks do make vocalizations, could have been red shoulders, could have been coopers, so many different things. That's why it's kind of fun to play around on Google or using Audubon's different apps to kind of play those vocalizations back. Is that what it sounded like? Is that what it looked like? Different things like that. What else do we got, Kate? All right, so uh, we talked about how old they are. So Steve is close to 30 and Sig is about 19. Uh, what do these two eat? Oh, well, it's pretty simple for us. Now in the wild, again, they're gonna catch a wide variety of prey, small to medium-sized rodents, rabbits, things like that. Here at the zoo, their primary diet happens to be thawed out frozen mice. And in the case of Steve, he also gets ground, uh, basically a, a brown carnivore, ground beef diet, which would feed to carnivores. So that's in, in short, you know, the, the, the short side of it is, yeah, mostly for the most part, a staple is thawed out frozen mice. Yep, and the occasional rat, rabbit. Thing yeah, like oh, that. and actually, yeah, I should mention too, yes, uh, Sig does also get small rats too. He enjoys the rats. He loves it. <laughs> That's his treat for the week. Yeah. So, how fast can these guys fly when they're not diving? When they're not diving, it's on average between like 20 to 40 miles per hour. Cool, that um, was a but question. I, but from... I should say too, for this goes for wild or in human care, most raptors, especially hawks, 
They'll spend about 75% of their day just perching. They would like to conserve that energy as much as possible and really only be flying, diving, you know, doing those courtship behaviors, traveling when they really need to, when something spooks them, when they're in pursuit of prey or their mate. Um, otherwise, you're gonna be seeing them out in the wild just perching on something that's very high up um, just so they can conserve that energy. Just like, you know, you don't wanna be running around all day long yeah. using up all your energy. These guys like to conserve their energy to save it up when they do have to pursue their prey. Yeah. Oh, um, you guys have answered most of the questions so far. Most awesome. of the questions so far, okay. Oh, and Bailey was mentioning like, what are some of our local hawks? There's one that's very, very vocal. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the ones we're hearing around the zoo right now. Yeah, so around the zoo, we actually have two red, red-shouldered hawks, which are a little bit different than red tails. So they are, first of all, smaller in size. You might remember that I said that the red-tailed hawks are a little bit bigger and they're called red-shouldered hawks, which is almost like a misnomer because really the, the red patterning that they have, it's splotchy on their chest area and then part of their wings as well, just have different coloration. Their tails look a little bit different, but those two are what we call juvenile. They're younger. So they are constantly making noise, especially out in the wild. A lot of younger raptors or younger hawks need to be loud so that when food comes to the nest for them, they know they're gonna get fed, but it does take a few years out in the wild for them to drop that behavior of always calling. So they're constantly calling to each other. We think it's a pair, so a male and a female. And they are looking for food, but they're not the best hunters quite yet. Mike has actually had the, the I'll say the privilege of photographing them when they've caught a few crows. But as far as very quick land mammals scurrying across the ground, we have not seen that so far. But they have caught a few crows and I know a few songbirds have chased them out of their nest area too. So they've been giving all of the animals in the zoo some enrichment with their calls, their flying. They've actually landed during our Facebook lives in the past, just a couple yards behind Kate, who's filming right now. So <laughs> they are very uh, charismatic, I will say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so someone asked if they think they might have red tails in somewhere like Iowa, so across the United across States. Across the US. Yeah. Our most common yeah. bird of prey, basic, or very common hawk species, yeah, yeah. across very the Americas. Awesome. So we yep. also have a question, are these birds housed together or do they get along with each other? They're housed separately. Now you notice like, you know, Sig, see Steve here, I couldn't care less. They were, you know, they've been neighbors in the past. You know, Sig is actually living in one of our outdoor uh, habitats right now. But nope, they, they live separately. Yeah. Now, one thing I should mention too now, like we often get asked, get asked by guests, are these birds endangered? Mm -hmm. Well, we can quite honestly answer no. no. But birds like this, owls, falcons, lots of different birds of prey, vultures, do face some serious challenges in the wild. Absolutely. So this is something Mike and I are pretty passionate about. We mm -hmm. talk Don't get us started with yeah, us now. Don't get us started yeah. with this. But something that these <laughs> predators, and we will call them predators because as far as the sky goes, they're pretty much apex predators out there. They are doing the job, like I mentioned earlier, of controlling just about all of the prey population. They are an integral part of keeping that ecosystem in balance. Now, unfortunately, there are still a lot of rodents out there or what we like to call pests, right? Different things eating our gardens, rats coming maybe in our house outside we're seeing their feces we want to control the rodent problem we don't maybe sometimes realize these birds are out there doing it for us so when we use things like rodenticides which is essentially any sort of poison that you are putting out into your local environment when that prey animal whether it's a rat a mouse whatever it might be when they eat that poison they may not die right away in fact they might keel over but predators like this or even you know falcons owls eagles, all sorts of animals. Vultures are scavengers. Vultures are scavengers. They will eat that prey item and that poison will also then make them very sick or in most cases will actually cause death with these raptors. So a lot of local rehabilitation centers have reached out and said, this is a, an unprecedented problem. It's increasing over time. It's definitely one of the leading causes of death for birds of prey. Yeah, and one thing like, it's kind of a horrible way to die too because it actually causes your, your, to cause internal bleeding and that's how the animal unfortunately comes. Not only does that little rodent die, but you've also caused, and not, not just birds of prey, um, foxes, coyotes, wolves, uh, uh, bobcats, yeah. you know, all can also be affected by, by right, It affects the whole ecosystem. The whole ecosystem, yeah. And we will say, you know, there are alternative methods to pest management. Um, there are a lot of ways online. You can look up, especially your local rehabilitation center. They will have a plethora of ideas for you. But one thing you can do it's just encouraging raptors in your area, right? You've got big trees. You maybe do a DIY nest box for any sort of owl species that may be close by. You buy one of those have a heart traps. 
where you can then just set that animal free, whatever you do. There are a lot of different methods you can choose from, but we will say rodenticide is probably the worst of many different things you could be doing. You're also endangering your pets at home too, children as well. It's not just the raptors, but that definitely is what we want to touch on because we like to say raptors are kind of the solution. They're yeah. pretty much out there doing that job for us. So just try to keep them in mind, especially if you do enjoy viewing them whenever you're outside. I know a lot of us have seen hawks and really appreciate being able to drive on the freeway and maybe even see three on our way home. So we want to keep them safe. Okay, we have one more question I think we'll manage to fit in. So what makes a bird of prey a bird of prey? I'll let Mike take this one. I've been blabbing on. Oh no, okay. Rodenticide. Well, again, yeah, rodenticide. <laughs> so basically, again, it's characteristics of bird of prey forward-facing eyes. They've got to be able to scan the horizon looking for their prey. Powerful feet and talons to catch and kill their prey. Curved beak to use to basically pick apart or shred or swallow their, their prey whole. Those are kind of common things that are found in all birds of prey, which again includes owls, falcons, eagles, a uh, wide variety of different birds have those similar characteristics. But again, they're basically, again, carnivores or, or you know, they're predators. They only eat other, other birds for the most part or other animals, I should say. So that's really kind of a... And they're hunting with those feet. So something as opposed to a parrot, we have a comment here. Right. That they're like, but parrots have sharp beak and right. sharp nails. Perfect. But those nails are for perching. And those beaks, usually they use that to get fruit right. and different things. Yeah. But they're hunting. These birds of prey are hunting with those feet. Yeah. So all the strength... Or raptors. Yeah. 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 So like, you know, a parrot has all of its strength in its beak in order to crack open seeds and nuts. These guys have pretty much all their strength in their feet and their talons. Yeah. And what I'll add in too is like a lot of people are saying, what do you mean by the term raptor? So... What Mike's describing, you know, hunting with those feet, that's a raptor characteristic. But bird of prey can also be something like a kookaburra or a sandhill crane, things that could be hunting with their feet. So they have those two cans, I found. Yeah, two cans, we recently learned. You know, definitely a bird of prey, but those birds are not raptors because they don't have those talons and they're not necessarily hunting with their feet, but they're still a bird of prey because they're actively seeking out their food. They're just using their beaks instead. Perfect, thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Um, just one quick last question. I think we'll get uh, Ronan, age eight, I believe asked, uh, what is their wingspan? Oh yeah, so they have pretty similar wings. Yeah, it's the red-tailed hawk is about This is like the best section where we're three, eyeballing it. I think this is about three and a half feet yeah. mm -hmm. from tip to tip. All These guys may be slightly and a quarter as wide. Yeah. Yeah. Quite okay. Yep. Perfect. Well, thanks guys. Any last remarks? Um, well, we do want to say that this is our last Facebook Live. So we want to say thank for you. Now. For now. For now. For now, right? So we want to thank you so much for pretty much taking this several month long journey with us, yeah. whether it's the keeper staff, the veterinary staff, the interpretive center, we really appreciate you guys tuning in and we do appreciate the support from Jiffy Lube to, in order to help us make these happen. We've really enjoyed them. We've had a lot of fun with it, absolutely. We know there have been some viewers every single week that log on and we do see you guys. We really appreciate your support. Um, and yeah, just thank you for supporting the Sacramento Zoo. Especially. Which is now, again, we're still open. We are still, we are open. in fact, yep. open. Yes. Very much so. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. So All bye. Right. Thank you, bye. bye.